Hey, what's going on, team? On this week's episode of the Lecture Series, we're going to be talking about the hip hinge. Now, the hip hinge is one of the most important moves for all of your training and really in everyday life as well. Anytime you bend over to pick something up, you're doing some form of the hip hinge. Now, if you don't hip hinge properly, that can lead to a lot of problems. It can lead to especially lower back pain, which is one of the most common problems I see in athletes today. When we talk about the hip hinge, there's actually a lot of factors that are at play. So there's a lot of musculature that's involved. And now I want to talk about three sets of musculature in particular. And then there's also a lot of physics that are happening as well that are making certain types of hip, hip hinge incorrect and certain types incorrect. So when we talk about the musculature, there's three sets of musculature that we want to talk about in particular. Now the first set is those abdominal muscles. So these abdominal muscles help keep our pelvis neutral. When we do our hip hinge, we want to primarily focus on the femur rotating on the pelvis and not the pelvis rotating on the femur. So if we look at ourselves doing like a dying bug, we'll notice we're trying to tilt our pelvis one way or another to try to press our low back against the ground. And same thing happens once we move into a bridge. So we want to try to keep that motion out of play when we do the hip hinge and keep ourselves neutral, which is why I spent the last two weeks talking about the abdominals. And then we move on to this week, talk about the hip hinge. And then we want to primarily focus on these two sets of musculature, actually doing the action of the hinge while the abdominal muscles keep ourselves neutral. So we have two sets of musculature here that I want to focus on, which are the hip flexors and the hip extensors. Now the hip flexors, uh, the main ones that I'll mention, are the iliopsoas, which connect to your lumbar spine and then to your femur. You have your uh, rectus femoris, which is one of your long quad muscles that actually attaches all the way down to your knee, and it starts at the pelvis. And then you have your TFL. The TFL is a really interesting one because it actually can get really fired up uh, and really overactive and cause a lot of problems if it's being used too frequently. Now the hip flexors, they actually cause a lot of that anterior pelvic tilt, which can lead to the lower back pain. Now we need our hip flexors to flex our hip, but when we talk about the hip hinge, we actually want to try to turn these guys off as much as we can in order to primarily focus on the hip extensors. Now the hip extensors, the main ones that I'll mention, are the glute max, the hamstrings, and then a couple of the adductor muscles. Now glute max is obviously a very big muscle, very powerful muscle. However, when we hip hinge, it's actually going to be primarily a hamstring dominant motion. However, the way I'm going to show you guys the hip hinge is going to also utilize that glute max and those adductors as much as possible. Because we want to use the most musculature possible in order to make these things happen, happen well, and be really forceful and powerful when we move. The drill that I'm doing here is a single leg RDO and a staggered stance, which just means that my foot, my front foot, is slightly in front of my back foot and my back toe is in line with my front heel. This gives me a little more support compared to a rear foot elevated or just a single leg position. I have this dowel here, and now what this dowel is doing is trying to cue a few things. It's trying to cue my pelvis in the good neutral positioning. It's also trying to cue my head so that I have good cervical control as I move through this hip hinge. So here I am doing this motion. I'm going down here. And now what you'll see is my first motion wasn't to drop my torso over my front foot. It was actually to push my butt back behind me. Now what this is doing is it's keeping all of my force right to the middle of my foot. Now like I said, the hip hinge, most leaning forward motions, are actually hamstring dominant movements. However, to utilize as much of the musculature as possible, especially that glute max, we actually want to send our butt behind us, keeping the weight through our mid foot. That way we can actually utilize this glute max and be as efficient and effective in our movement as possible. Now, as I go down, you can also see I'm leaning my torso over my foot. However, my shin's staying vertical throughout the entire motion. Now, the dowel is staying against my lower back, against my mid-back, and against my head the entire time. This means I have good pelvic control. I'm staying neutral. And I'm also having, I'm demonstrating good cervical control as well. So as I come up here, I'm going to drive straight down, I'm going to push up, and then I'm going to get nice and tall at the end. Now, you can see I actually have a little bit of anterior pelvic tilt at the top here. However, this is not too, too bad. I'd like to see it be a little bit better, but overall pretty decent pelvic control in that movement.
if we focus on the proper things when we hit hinge, chances are we're going to be able to eliminate a lot of back pain and increase our efficiency and effectiveness in so many different movements, such as walking, jumping, sprinting. All these different motions actually tie back to the hip hinge and our ability to use our hip extensors in an eccentric and a concentric way really effectively. So that was the hip hinge. Just remember every single topic builds upon itself. So if you haven't, go check out those core training videos and those breathing videos to so your uh, hip hinge right. Next week's gonna be the squat. So make sure you really focus on the hip hinge this week. So you're getting that right before we start to squat and add more pieces to the puzzle. Make sure to check out my Instagrams at tiny white four workouts and at John Williams training. If you guys want four week programs all written by me, you can go to my website, tinywhiteboardworkouts.com. They're all $9.99 right now on that website. So check that out.